Hello, huge movie fanatic Nate, stopping on by, and this time I'm coming at you to do one of my famed movie slash Blu-ray reviews. Today I'm going to be reviewing the movie and Blu-ray of Neighbors from 1981. This is a movie that I'd seen the VHS, which probably looked a lot like this right here, in video stores in the 80s growing up in the comedy section, and probably maybe, you know, if they had any like mini standees or, you know, promotional materials. A lot of times in the 80s, mom and pop video stores would collect and just keep all of their, you know, really small, you know, they had really small um, promotional material and stuff for movies that came out over the years, and they just adorn their video stores with this stuff, um, and it'd just be full of all this kind of stuff. So, if I didn't see this box, I saw some kind of promotional material for this cover uh, growing up in the 80s in, in video stores. Um, but, you know, I, I don't think I really ever had any interest in seeing it, but recently, actually it says um, 19, or 2019, so last year Mill Creek put this movie out on Blu-ray, and when they, you know, obviously if you saw some of my reviews of some other Mill Creek titles or Blu-rays that I did last year, including the triple feature, I forget what it was called, an action triple feature thing with Blind Fury and, I don't know, there's a Chuck Norris movie in there and then White Line Fever or whatever. Um, you know, if you saw those videos, you'll know that, um, in my opinion, I mean, Mill Creek's been really doing a really, really slam-bang job at putting out a lot of these older catalog titles that studios are really have no interest in doing themselves and putting them out on Blu-ray in a way, or in, in versions that are really, really, really amazing quality for what, you know, their, you know, the name Mill Creek to me in their DVD years, really, really known for subpar, you know, titles that, you know, catalog titles that studios had no interest in distributing anymore. I mean, the DVDs, you know, a lot of Mill Creek DVDs that I got over the years that were, you know, you previously viewed from clearance and stuff like that, were really, really ridiculously subpar, but from what I've experienced on their Blu-ray releases, I mean, they've been just knocking stuff out of the park. Like, I don't think I've come across a bad Mill Creek Blu-ray release. Um, so I have never actually saw this movie, Neighbors, until I don't remember exactly. I think I got this Blu-ray sometime early this year, you know, January or February or something like that. So I'd never seen this until just a couple months ago. And this, of course, is the returning, you know, duo of Dan Aykroyd, or in this case, well, it's, it's, I think it's called, I think John Belushi gets first billing, so it's John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd pairing, of course, a year after their, their amazing pairing in the, what I would regard as relatively great movie, Blues Brothers, and I think from what I understand, this might very well be John Belushi's last movie, and it's really interesting that, Usually he's the, like, a, you know, the, the guy, like, in Animal House or whatever, he's the, the wild and crazy guy, not to take from Steve Martin, of course, but usually he's the guy who's the wild one or the guy doing, you know, questionable things or this and that, and I thought it was kind of interesting, and they probably, you know, they, you know, probably was something, it was just really interesting for them to kind of turn that on in the, its head and, and have John Belushi play an actual role that was more or less straight, and not not in the you know sexual sense although he is straight in, in the sexual sense in this movie as well but i mean in the sense that he's you know his character in this movie is not really the goofy one it's the it's the it's the character the boring if you will boring middle-aged uh you know or approaching middle age it says uh slightly overweight fairly average guy who is approaching middle age so he's the just the average kind of boring guy who and you know in this movie and and uh, Dan Aykroyd, of course, is the, the goofy one or whatever. So that was kind of interesting. So, you know, for me, you know, being the age I am and stuff and, you know, being, having grown up in the 80s and stuff, it's really fun. You know, I just assume, you know, as, as horrible as movies, in my opinion, are, for the most part, that come out nowadays. I mean, I'd much rather see a movie for the very first time that was made and that came out in 1981 than see a, a new movie that would come out now, you know. That's one thing that's great about, you know, being a movie nut, especially in the era of, you know, luckily still having physical media and outfits like Mill Creek putting out these amazing, amazing Blu-rays of these older titles. It's just, how cool was it that I got to see this movie for the first time, you know, in 2019 or early 2020 in such a pristine, you know, version like this for a relatively decent price. I think this was under $10, of course, because it's Mill Creek. So, I got to tell you, you know, when I got it and put it in, there was... 
was it's just so cool it's like a time machine instead of going to a movie nowadays and seeing some stupid corporate comedy that's just a just a big piece of crap you can go back you know in time like freaking whatever 40 39 years or whatever and <clears throat> see this movie for the very first time with good old Dan Aykroyd, John Belushi, last time I think, from what I understand, they'd ever appear together, or last time John Belushi would appear at all in a movie or whatever, and it was just, it was just great from, you know, word go or whatever when I first put it in and stuff, and what's interesting is, you know, you, I, I, you, one would think after the success of Blues Brothers that these two characters, or, you know, Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi were probably really big names and stuff and from in what's interesting about seeing this movie or, or reading the opening credits and is that it's um I guess it was based off of a novel and it's really kind of rare for a movie like this a kind of a you know just like a goofy ass comedy movie from the early 80s to been have been based on a novel or whatever it'd be interesting to know how 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 close it is to the novel um or whatever, but it's really interesting how, you know, I would imagine this is kind of a, probably a, you know, a more high, high-end movie for the time, you know, with those two stars and stuff, and it's interesting how, you know, a lot of times, they don't really do, like, it's like, uh, white credits on black, like, I think all the white credits on black, but, you know, I guess, <laughs> for what, I, it's really interesting to me, like, how they decide whether to do white credits on black, or, credits when stuff's happening but in this in this case it's like to have the all the credits happen on black and stuff it gives the movie a chance to set up the scene or set up the stage uh, or the, the the feel of the movie by having the goofy music the music in this movie is actually really really pretty good and it's like orchestral stuff and you know it's it's got this goofy theme so before anything even starts like the movie the the, the movie's got a the opening credits the, mu the music has a goofy kind of a theme and it's setting up before you see any visuals it's setting up the mood of this movie and kind of just the you know whatever you I wouldn't call it slapstick but slapstick in the sense of it's it's mental slapstick more than anything where it's just kind of you know not necessarily stuff going on I mean there is a little bit going on on the screen but it's more like just like mental slapstick if if you understand what I mean just like just scenes and, and goings on that just make the, you and the John Belushi character go like, oh, you know, what the hell is going on? It's like this guy is trapped in a in a nightmare, and it does say uh, a comic nightmare. It's like a tagline, if you will, or whatever. But uh, so by the time the end credit or the beginning credits are all over, and the music kind of sets up the mood and stuff, it's really kind of cool how we we just cut to this shot of this this one house you know, that looks normal or whatever, and then this other house that, in the grass is all green, and this other house that looks not so normal, and the grass is all dead or whatever, and there's like, uh, you know, it's like a cul-de-sac or whatever, and there's just this grass in the middle or whatever, and um, I, I don't remember if, uh, I think, you know, John Belushi, I think he's coming, his character is coming home from work or something like that, and what's really interesting about this movie is it's like it takes place I mean I guess technically we are it isn't you know moment, minute to minute because there are you know it, it goes through a whole night obviously in 90 minutes so I, I guess it's not you know minute for minute of course but the movie is like I mean it all takes place in like a 24 hour period or something like that or or maybe not 24 hours maybe I don't know something like that 12 to 24 hour period or whatever so we, we see, you know, John Belushi come home, he's just a boring husband or whatever from work, and it's so funny how we see him, like, initially just sitting in front of the TV, and I think Dan Aykroyd does pretty much all these voices coming from the TV and stuff, like, you know, and next, or later on when there's, like, a funeral home commercial, I think it's Dan Aykroyd doing the commercial, but... Early on, when we first see him come home from work and he's watching TV, he's flipping through the channels and seeing these just depressing news stories about, yes, the cinder block fell from, you know, however many stories above and hit this man on the head. And as you can see, this is where it hit him. And it was, and then the interview was like, yeah, it felt like someone's hurling it, hurling it at me. And it sounds like an actual, like, quote-unquote real news report that maybe they just bought and used in the movie or something like that. If it's not, they did a really good job at recreating one. And then they, he flips the cha channel to another channel, and it's like this uh, news story about this guy who had driven, you know, off of the ferry when he had he meant to go forward, but it was in reverse. And so, I mean, it's just like, it's just funny off the bat. This is, you know, 
arguably there's all kinds of different variations of comedy. I mean, you don't just have like one sense, one, one form of a sense of humor. There are multiple, 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 multiple different kinds of sense of humor within the word comedy. You know, there's the kind of the British dry humor, there's the American stupid, actual stupid, fucking annoying, dumb humor, but I mean, there might be some decent humor in between British and American dumb humor. I mean, what I'm saying is there's all kinds of different funny, and this movie is a really, really, I guess it'd be more along the lines of British dry humor. It's not like Adam Sandler just, blah, 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 just you know, mind-numbing stupid American comedy. It's, it's more dry, subtle comedy where a lot of people might not even laugh once at it but I mean from the from from the beginning I was just laughing at it it's just like the, you know the commercials and the stuff he was seeing on TV and you know the, the subtle I guess I don't know how I describe it it's it's really just subtle I guess more dry humor or not exactly sure you know I mean I was you know big let's face it a big part of me was laughing just because I was seeing for the very first time a 39 year old movie with, you know, Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi in it, or John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd, I should say. So it was just fun from the historic perspective to be able to see this for the very first time, and not only that, but in this relatively amazing quality for the very first time. So I guess without doing a beat by beat, I'll just say that that's <laughs> the premise of this movie is, you know, we just get a glimpse at the boring life of you know John Belushi's character with his wife and just how boring it is and she kind of you know walks like a zombie into the kitchen and is gonna make dinner and he thinks it's gonna be one thing and it's actually frozen waffles and um, and then of course so we get a really small glimpse at their daily boring life married life or whatever and then you know like ding dong you know or actually first you know he sees the U-Haul show up or the car pulling the U-Haul it's actually a it's actually one of those you know, car trucks, which I kind of refer to as a, uh, you know, a, a, a cuck or a trar, you know, one of those stupid car trucks from the 80s or whatever, actually probably late 70s, early 80s, where it's one of these car trucks pulling this U-Haul and he's like, you know, Myrtle or whatever the hell her name, his wife's name is, and na new neighbors are here or whatever. And it's funny from a standpoint of like, you know, you could make the, the scariest movie all, of all time could be in fact titled neighbors uh if you know anything about you know living in a house and and people new people moving in next door i mean anything could happen and it could be the night the nightmare of your life or whatever so it is an interesting you know idea to take a movie like this it could be you know, might as well i mean you could almost put it in, in the horror section in those regards or psychological horror slash comedy because you know to some people luckily I haven't experienced anything like really horrible neighbors or anything like that but a lot of people do and it's just like oh my gosh you know it is interesting um, luckily I as a viewer of this movie not having experienced anything like this myself I can laugh at it and enjoy it maybe if something like this had happened to me it wouldn't be so enjoyable or whatever but maybe it'd be more so because it'd be more relatable but anyway He's, you know, it's so funny because as soon as he sees the U-Hauls, the U-Haul pull up, he's like, I don't see any kid stuff, and it's just like, it's it's just, I don't know, it's like I say, it's not really funny, but you find, you're necessarily funny, but you find yourself laughing at almost everything that he says or everything that's going on, just because he's, I guess it's taking the character of John Belushi and just turning it on its head and turning him into like the most boring character possible, and I think just that makes it funny, you know, basically he can say anything, you know, oh, I don't see any kid stuff, and that's just funny, it's funny because it's John Belushi just saying something boring, and it's also funny because, you know, potentially when you see new neighbors come in, that's what you look for, you look for kid stuff, you look for dogs, where I, I hope to not see dogs, or kid stuff, so it's something that, you know, even, even, you know, if people that, that don't live in apartments or whatever they might have experienced at one point of their life if they're not living in a house that, you know, currently maybe they grew up in a house or whatever and their parents experienced it and they experienced it through their parents. What I'm saying is, you know, it's, it's funny how the paranoia at the beginning of the movie when the neighbors show up and of course ding dong and it's like, oh gosh, and he opens up the door to the sexy chick and I, you know, I mean, this chick, I don't know, she's so familiar to me, I don't know if I've, if I've seen her as a younger girl in a movie or what, but this girl, or this woman in this movie who plays Dan Aykroyd's wife, 
just just reminds me of like the things she says, the kind of dirty, quote unquote, dirty things she says, and the way she acts and the way she talks reminds me so much of. Maybe I saw parts of this on TV when I was a kid or something. It just reminds me of of, of a woman or a younger girl or something like that. I may have seen parts of this on TV when I was a kid because there was something so familiar about you know Dan Aykroyd's wife in this movie and, and the way she delivers her lines and in that dirty kind of girly playful dirty fashion that was very familiar like I've seen you know very familiar like maybe I've seen her saying those lines before but basically you know she shows up first and of course Dan Aykroyd thinks oh my gosh you know this is my new neighbor like wow and you know, and I don't know if he knows at the time that she's married or whatever, but she'll come in and uh, instantly, like, sits down on the couch with them and, I don't know, is, is all kind of seductive or whatever and goes into the kitchen to see what his wife's making and realizes that she's making frozen waffles versus something else that he thought she was going to make. And then he comes back into the living room. I think that's when it's we're introduced to the Dan Aykroyd character and this is what I mean. I mean, this movie is just like, it's, you know, it's, it's really kind of just a fantasy. I mean, it's played in a way that's just really like not realistic and like, you know, the, the wife disappears. Now Dan Aykroyd's there and Dan Aykroyd, I think he's wearing like contact lenses that make his eyes like goofy, almost like alien blue eyes or whatever. He's got his hair dyed all blonde and he's got like a, you know, a freaking uh, like a, you know, a metal crown or whatever thing on his tooth, and he's really, you know, I've never seen Dan Aykroyd like this, and, you know, I mean, I like Dan Aykroyd just in general because he's a part of the generation, you know, or, you know, I'm of the generation that grew up with, you know, in the 80s watching Dan Aykroyd movies and stuff like that, so I'm, I'm biased, just, I just like Dan Aykroyd, and it was just weird, I never saw him like this before, so basically, I, without Try, without going too long with this review, basically, I guess I'll just say that, that that's the whole movie. It's like a 12-hour, you might as well just say 12-hour, maybe, you know, 12-hour plus 6 hours. I don't know what 12 plus 6 is, but whatever it is, maybe that's the length of this movie. 12 hours plus, you know, movie takes place within a, you know, a day that turns into night that turns back into morning into midday or whatever again. And just the antics that the neighbors, you know, are doing to Dan Aykroyd and, or I'm not, I mean, John Belushi rather, and it's funny because I, you know, I was going to say to doing it to John Belushi and his wife, but his wife really is kind of part of it, which is interesting, and, you know, John, it's really, it's weird how we think that, you know, as a viewer, that John Belushi met the neighbors first and later on it turns out that she met them earlier in the day when he was at work and I don't know the movie just unfolds in a really 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 competently written organic way and that's probably maybe wouldn't have happened if this hadn't have been based on a novel or whatever it's I found myself as I was watching it I was just like wow you know this movie really unfolds and it's it's just like you're constantly peeling away more and more of of whatever to see what's under the next piece and to see what's going to happen next or whatever and what you think is happening isn't necessarily what's happening and I don't know there's too much to, that happens in this movie to really obviously describe it all and plus I want to try not to do so so many reviews like you know that are like just where I say everything that goes on and just try to make sh shorter reviews and stuff like that but I mean, I think I'll pretty much just say that, that the movie is like a 12 hour, 12, you know, hour or so, 12 plus hour, takes place within a 12 hour period or whatever from, you know, afternoon to through night into the next morning into the afternoon or whatever. And just everything and every, you know, anything and everything that can happen with these, you know, basically caused by these goofy neighbors. And what's so funny is, like I said before, you know, the freaking, uh, you know, his wife is kind of, you know, joins in on the goofy neighbor antics and stuff and it's just like it's just a really 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 weird movie i'm just so glad i you know obviously i did a blind buy i mean i figured the blu-ray would look amazing i figured you know for less than 10 bucks this dan Aykroyd, john Belushi, it was going to be worth it i mean it definitely was you know i've seen it like three times since i got it and it, it's a really just it's just so great to be able to see such an old movie for the first time it kind of like i say it's like a time machine you know it's like I don't want to be in 2020. I want to be in 19, 
you know, freaking 81, and this is a way you can do it, you know, in high definition, no less. And one thing before I end the review, I do want to mention is they do have a daughter who comes home, and the daughter is none other, none other than the the chick who plays Vicky from Friday the 13th Part 2. Of course, this came out the same year, and it's just like, oh, I don't think I've ever seen her in anything else, and it was interesting seeing her actually working alongside John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd and stuff. So she comes home from, like, college or whatever, having, she's like a punk, she, it's funny because she comes back all punk, dressed as all punk rock girl and stuff, who was kicked out of college for doing something bad, stealing or some crap, and it's funny how she dresses like, more just normal or conservative, like girly, you know, when she's at home or something, and then later on in the movie, towards the end, when she's going to go back to school, she she's leaving all punk rock again, which is, I think, just kind of a subtle, subtle goofy thing that's supposed to be all funny and goofy and stuff. But the one thing I guess I don't like so much about the movie is the, at some point in the movie, like the tow truck guy and stuff is called, and I, I, I kind of feel like having that guy be all goofy too, I don't know, I just feel like in a way that maybe the tow truck guy and his son and stuff shouldn't have been goofy. It just feels like the only people that should have been goofy in this movie were, or should be like Dan Aykroyd and his wife. And I feel like the, having the tow truck driver and his son be kind of goofy characters, I kind of felt like that was something that maybe shouldn't have been that way. Because it kind of makes it seem like the whole world that you know, John Belushi's character is in is, is goofy, when I think, in fact, it would be better if just, as I said, the, just the neighbors were the goofy and the tow truck driver and his son were just normal. That's the one thing probably that I like the least about this movie is just the, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's to be quite frankly, I mean, to be honest, as a, as a viewer, it's, it's hard to, you know, you've got enough trying to, you know, I guess swallow or you know you deal with the goofiness of uh, Dan Aykroyd and his wife's antics and it's just maybe a little bit overload for me personally when all of a sudden the tow truck driver and his son were kind of goofy com comic characters too so I that's the one thing I would change is, is not have them be goofy just have them be normal but um, I'm gonna go as high as three stars out of four stars for neighbors I thought it was I found it was you know, definitely, definitely a good blind buy for me being, you know, of the era where these are the kind of movies I grew up with. Um, once, I, as I said, I mean, I may have seen bits and pieces of this on TV when I was a kid because, you know, uh, Dan Aykroyd's wife is so freaking familiar to me, but I don't know. I, there's really no way for me to know or not, but uh, it's, it's an interesting movie and it's just full of so many funny things where Dan Aykroyd's got this RC plane that he ends up flying later on when, you know, when Dan Aykroyd's wife is gonna actually, you know, Dan Aykroyd's wife is, you know, always like hinting sexually th things at John Belushi, and then when he gets all ready, it seems like two or three times this happens, and he gets all ready, and he comes downstairs, and she's gone, and there's a time towards the end of the movie where, you know, he's actually in bed, and she's actually gonna do him a favor, if you know what I mean, and Dan Aykroyd's character is outside, and flying the RC plane, and he's just, you know, talking like, oh baby, yeah, there you go, you know, up and down, or, you know, come to Popper or whatever, and he's, John Belushi, meanwhile, is like, I can't concentrate when his wife's in bed, or, you know, when Dan Aykroyd, or Dan Aykroyd's wife is in bed with him and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's, like I say, it's just, it's just a goofy form of, of humor that a lot of people might not even find funny, but I, I, I found, I found it funny, and like I said, it was just great to see for the very first time, you know, 39 years later, you know, just the good old John Belushi and, and Dan Aykroyd antics and stuff. So I think that'll pretty much do it for my review of the movie. On to my brief review of the uh, Mill Creek Blu-ray that came out last year in 2019 um, in this wonderful, or the version I got. There might be two versions, but this version is the wonderful VHS, I don't know what they call it, but the VHS slipcase version where you've got, you know, it's really cool. It looks like a, you know, VHS from the 80s. With stickers on it like they put on the you know video stores mom and pop and you've got the you know looks like the Columbia TriStar home video um, tape and you've actually got the tape slipping out of there which is on the slipcase and then under the slipcase you've got completely different artwork which is kind of cool you've got um, just the, probably a different poster art of John Belushi sitting in the chair and Dan Aykroyd and wife in the window driving them nuts um, and then you've kind of got different, you know, kind of like the slipcase cover and different things there.
this is what the disc looks like. I mean, you know, for being Mill Creek, pretty decent packaging too. As for the video and audio quality of the Blu-ray release, it's absolutely amazing. I don't remember if this is stereo or mono. I mean, being 1981, it very well might just be a mono movie. I don't remember if it's stereo or mono, but I do remember that the image looks, oh my gosh, just amazing. It's just another, just another release from Mill Creek on Blu-ray that they just, you know, hit, hit out of the park. I mean, it's absolutely a slam-bang release. It doesn't look any worse. It looks just as good as if... Uh, you know, Columbia, Sony, Columbia put it out on Blu-ray themselves. It's just, uh, I'm very, very proud of uh, what's what uh, Mill Creek's doing these days with their releases, especially, you know, and being a, you know, generation of kid who grew up in the 80s with video stores, I really appreciate this kind of packaging with the VHS cover and the VHS sliding out and stuff like that. But the image quality is absolutely amazing. I mean, I, I really can't see any way anyone could expect anything better from an actual Sony slash uh, Columbia home video release. I mean, it looks absolutely amazing. The audio, whether it's mono or stereo, um, sounds fantastic. There's nothing, you know, nothing that stuck out in a negative way for about, you know, about the release for me. Um, it's just an all-around slam-bang package. Like I say, maybe this was $6.99 or $7.99 or something like that that I got this for. Um, <clears throat> definitely recommend it if you're a fan of early 80s uh, comedy movies. Like, I think this is rated R and what's interesting about it is, you know, I don't really know why. I mean, I guess it's maybe because of the sexual in innuendo because I don't think there's really necessarily any s much, to, in, much in the line of swear words or anything like that. There's no nudity, unfortunately, or no female nudity, unfortunately. So, I'm not exactly, it might just be the sexual innuendo and, you know, things that are implied and stuff that got this thing in our rating. Maybe there's some swear words, I can't remember, but, uh, yeah, I'd say that pretty much does it from my review of Neighbors in the Mill Creek uh, Blu-ray that came out not so terribly long ago. It might have been like the, I don't know, the end of last year when it came out with this, I'm not exactly sure, but I remember, you know, when they, when they announced it, I was like, oh man, I never saw that. For it probably be less than ten bucks, I'm definitely going to end up just blind buying that. And obviously, as as you know, that's what I did, and turned out to be a release that I quite liked, more or less. So thank you very much for watching this video, and as always, we'll catch you on the next one.